Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update August 5th, 2019 edition. Make sure to watch till the end where for your convenience, I do a recap of all the dramas I covered in this episode. In this episode, the killing of 3,000 crows and a fan fractures her rib watching Mr. Fighting. But first, The Untamed is currently airing and has undoubtedly garnered a huge following. Unlike most period dramas with a male and female lead, this drama focuses on the brotherhood between two male leads played by Xiao Zhan and Wang Yibo. It is adapted from the BL novel Mo Dao Zhu Shi, generally translated as Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation, where the male leads have a romantic relationship. BL stands for Boys Love. However, BL stuff just doesn't fly with Chinese censorship, so the scriptwriters made adjustments and changed the romance into a bromance. But other than that, they reportedly did a good job retaining classic scenes and dialogue. Fans have been going gaga over the male leads, not only on screen but also off it. Xiao Zhan and Wang Yibo are quite similar in that they both debuted as members of boy bands, X9 and Unique, respectively. There's a 10 minute behind the scenes video which shows the two actors taking verbal jabs at each other in between shots. They're on a wooden boat on a lake, and Xiao Zhan says, This is how Wang Yibo treats me. He told me to jump into the lake. Wang Yibo retorts, It's just because I think it's too hot right now, so you might feel more comfortable if you have a bath. Xiao Zhan says, Oh, so you think I'll feel better if I jumped into the lake? Wang Yibo says, That's right. It certainly seems like the two formed a good friendship off screen and it contributed to their performances on screen as well. It was also recently Wang Yibo's 22nd birthday and Xiao Zhan wished him a happy birthday on Weibo. The message was, no need for too many words. Old Wang, happy birthday, charge forth. And there was a picture of them on the untamed set in a charge forth stance. And another picture presumably of Wang Yibo riding a motorcycle. To which Wang Yibo replied, oh my god, thank you brother Chen. Need a new motorcycle photo. On a separate but related incident, Wang Yibo's phone number was exposed by scalpers. Somehow scalpers got a hold of Wang Yibo's phone number and decided to make a buck or two by selling it. And people bought it. And actually tried to call him. And not only that, they were nice enough to share their experiences online. One so-called fan said, Sweet Wang's number has been exposed. It's being sold everywhere by scalpers, but it's real. My body is shaking all over. My first time calling, Wang Yibo, who are you looking for? Who are you looking for? I hung up. Later he calls back, I pretend I don't know and say, hi, hello. Wang Yibo spends half a minute saying, can you tell them to not call me anymore? My mom was beside me so I didn't dare say anything else and just went, oh, 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 okay, 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 I know, I know. Then he hung up. Really? People? Wang Yibo later addressed the issue and showed a screenshot of him receiving 194 calls. He also said that he was going to change his phone number. You know, I was thinking about this and how I would feel if I was in this situation. I think I would find the first few calls amusing, just cause I'm that type of person, I like to see the amusing side of things at first. And then I would start to wonder where these people are getting my phone number. And then yeah, I would start to feel like this is getting intrusive, and I would change my phone number, even though we all know what a headache that can be. The Killing of 3000 Crows is an upcoming costume drama starring Zheng Yecheng and Zhao Lu Shi. Zhao Lu Shi plays a princess from a vanquished kingdom that is annihilated by glass fire. She runs and hides at a sacred mountain where she meets an outstanding immortal played by Zheng Yecheng. They then begin a romance that spans 10 lifetimes. This is good news for fans of Love Better Than Immortality as the star in that, Zhao Lu Shi, follows up with another fantasy costume drama. Zheng Yecheng also has his share of costume dramas before this. He was in an oriental odyssey and also Let's Shake It which was popular enough to spawn a sequel. The two stars were recently at Mango TV's 2019 Forever Young event promoting the show. The drama wrapped filming in March and is slated for 40 episodes. Mr. Fighting is a now playing drama starring Deng Lun and Sandra Ma, and having watched a bit of it the other day, it is one that I hope to start really watching sometime soon. In it, Deng Lun plays a former star trying to recapture his past glory, and as such he's desperate to prove himself with every opportunity he has. There's a scene where he plays a woman and wears a long wig with bangs. The camera pans to him and he works the camera like a cheesy shampoo commercial. Well according to ET Today, that scene made a viewer laugh so hard that she fractured her rib. Through her messages to a friend, she said that she was drinking some water when she saw the scene and started laughing profusely. Her ribs started to hurt and when she went to the doctor, he diagnosed it as a fractured rib. She even uploaded a picture of the diagnosis and it showed she fractured her sixth rib. But her story has a bit of a happy ending to it. Her messages had since gone viral, so much so that it caught Deng Lun's attention and he posted a message for her. He said, my heart hurts for you, wish you a speedy recovery. 
That was nice of Deng Yun. So there you go. If you want to reach out to a celebrity, don't go out and buy their phone numbers from unscrupulous scalpers. That just shows you're desperate. Instead, fracture a rib or injure yourself and the celebrity will reach out to you. In case you don't already know, I'm just kidding. So a quick recap of all the dramas I covered this episode. The Untamed and Mr. Fighting are now playing and enjoying high viewership ratings, and the killing of 3,000 Crows wrapped filming in March. And now it's time for me to answer a question from one of you, a fan who supports my channel with a dollar or more by contributing through Patreon. Today's question comes from honorary first ever patron, Jody Lin 31 who asks, When do you think all of the episodes of Love and Destiny will be available with quality English subs? I am so ready to binge this series. I really wish the producers would automatically upload with English subtitles when Chinese shows are premiered. Do they even understand how large of an English speaking audience they have? I'm seriously considering taking an online course to try to learn the Chinese language because I love their drama so much. It's practically all I ever watch on YouTube, Netflix, and Viki. Good question, Jody. And I always encourage people to learn Chinese, whether it's for dramas or just to learn a new language. So I will start from the beginning. These channels that we see on YouTube license dramas from distributors. For example, Croton Megahit licenses Love and Destiny from distributors for the exclusive right to upload on YouTube, and they are the ones in charge of any sort of subbing for it. The producers and studios really have nothing to do with English subs on YouTube other than giving the channel the right to do so. So the channel can do the subs themselves, or they can hire someone to do it, or they can just approve subs from volunteers. Whichever way it is, they have the final say. So to answer the first part of your question, the only people who know when Love and Destiny are going to get quality English subs are the people at Croton Megahead. And to be honest, I don't even think they know themselves. It really is one of those, I'll get to it when I get to it kind of things. Why such a nonchalant attitude, you ask? That leads us to the second part of your question. I believe they do understand how large of an English speaking audience they have, but the truth is it pales in comparison to their Chinese speaking audience. That and making and timing subs is hard work. Anyone who's ever done subs will attest to that, especially if you want quality subs and not just Google translated ones. And hiring someone to do subs can be costly and not necessarily an expense that the channel wants to incur. Thanks again, Jody, for your question. And just a gentle reminder to all patrons, if you want your question to be considered for the show, please post it on my Patreon page. That way I know it came from a patron. And that's all for today, guys, and thank you all for watching. This show would not be possible without your support, whether it's through Patreon or simply by watching, commenting, and sharing. Subscribe and like, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Cheers!